Honestly, it feels like we're kicking a dead horse in this pet cemetery. And admittedly, the biscuit got a little wet before delivery. Things may have gotten mixed up somewhere along the way as things go in this inefficient system. This is Saturday, May 27th, 2023, at the time of this recording. And today's presentation is a continuation of Egnosis series, Part 9, Delta Point, Programming Matter, and the Music of Torah by Capetronics Dimensional Art, which is generated by AI Art Software with Brian D. Prater's Formula for Overunity. This presentation is written and narrated by Melissa R. Cody Prater. If humanity is going to survive, they are going to need people like us. Yet we won't survive even another month if Social Security is cut off as the powers that be are threatening to do. They are rulers in their own minds, but they are not rulers of anything. As things go in hell, many of those so-called rulers have criminal records and not just mild crimes, thought crimes, or made-up crimes like economic terrorists which is just another lawfare tactic and term to poo-poo on the poor inventors that really do all the work while those psychic junkies take all the credit in a system of enslavement. On that subject, if you will stick with me to the end of what I hope to be a lengthy presentation, I will divulge the meaning of my last statement with more clarity, and I hope you will agree with me that the correct action and course is set. So having found myself in such a thought crimes hell, where the world is vindictive yet responsive, I had to learn a new way of being if I was to fit in. I mostly kept to myself and taught the new fish online, until one day I met another through the digital web that echoed my sentiments and history has changed since then. This is a good time to mention again that these images, as you see here, were created using minimalistic parameters and Brian Prater's formula for overunity via AI art generator software. Yet from time to time in this responsive world, the AI brings in things from what should be beyond a computer program's ability. And this and other images that I have presented in the past without fanfare were provided to me in this suspicious manner. This image was generated for the Water Lily storybook series called A Clear Abstract Journey Through the Water Lily which is also available on this YouTube channel for WhoHub Humanitarian Software 208. And just so you don't get lost in all the information, this is the agenda for Part 9. In the first half, discussion begins with the Delta Point, its definition, how it relates to our current positioning, and a new type of technology for programmable matter. Then, to answer some misconceptions, we will discuss the unified field theory and how it corrects Einstein's theory of relativity. The first half concludes with an essay on time fragments and how the Torah, its numbers, and wisdom converge into a lyrical, meaningful song. And for warriors only in the second half, the battle reports will include some funny headlines and stories and then get serious with real world challenges. And finally, to soothe the soul, this presentation will come with a prolonged conclusion with some poetry and a vision of some angels on a mountain. Since this is the ninth video in a complex series of information and a little fun, 
let's review what we have learned as we unlock this labyrinth. The first video was difficult and emotional for me, and the final product is by far a long cry from how I was ranting. However, with help from my education in how to word things, even bad news, I plotted along and created the video, Part 1, Flaming Easter Eggs from Hell, detailing some of the facts and obstacles we deal with in the free energy open source community of scientists, engineers, inventors, technologists, and yes, even journalists and webmasters. I tried to lay out the basic groundwork, dispel some rumors, tell the truth about our experiences, and gather support. However, I was dismayed at the results. It was brushed aside from most everyone except for the free energy community as usual, as it has been for decades. Yet I can perceive of things that are abstract, and I was getting feedback that I should continue, that my videos were somehow getting seen in the right place to cause change. So I created part two, From Darkness to the Light, which is a, the title taken from one of my Kabbalist friend's book. In the video, I continue to, as gently as possible, considering the dire situation, introduce facts concerning how politics, religion, science, and everything that matters in this world are mixed up into a confusing mess that has created unnecessary division and opposition among people. The feedback was good, but I heard that they, whoever they are, wanted more. So I quickly put together and released part three, Sex, War, and Florn which explains through illustration of the egg how overunity moves through the universe and everything in it that it touches. It also addressed a huge political and societal problem in the most tactful way that I could muster. The feedback was very good, and some things in the world were altered or at least paused due to it, but that was not enough. The B system wanted more, so I threw it a meteor, a flaming Moldavite cube to be exact, and with it a message about two dreams God gave me before and about 9-11. And in it I proposed if there were no leaders to be found in this hell, then I would step up to the plate. And just so you know, I stand by my word. The world changed from, for me at least, from part four to part five. I spent a month in a whirlwind of psychic meetings and quiet operations. Then when the world, at least on my end, seemed to stabilize enough, I made part five, Agile Business Communications, that explains some of the inner workings of a human soul how the soul can ascend through the joining of two spirits, so to speak. Yet the new fish seemed too few and a bit timid. So I put out more information in the form of part six, New Fish Tour of Hoo-Ha, where I really start to blend how our fight is with powers and principalities as well as some AI that generates the language for this construct. I could hear from the matrix feedback that I did not turn in my reports in time. I don't know whether to laugh or scream. None of this is paid work, while my husband and I are literally starving to death slowly. But for the new fish, I continued this series with part seven, Creation Energies and Hoo-Ha Principles, which explains the inner morality of Hoo-Ha, which has always been there. We conceptualized it this way from the beginning. Then, to bring us all up to speed, in Part 8, Decode Breaking the Silence Battle Reports, I provided the videos of three tests, so to speak, where I, where I allowed God to work through me to teach you all a deeper wisdom 
and through it he referred to our strange situation, or rather configuration, in the form of Dagon, the fish-headed god. And that is where we are, still in new fish season, or about to be, as best as I can surmise with limited feedback. The act of creation, recreation, or destruction of creation from the ground point in the 3D realm as we move through time being the fourth dimension, drastic events cause massive shock waves in the universal system and may create cracks so that heavenly forces can intervene through those cracks. The expanded time means that we experience war a lot longer. We experience everything a lot longer. Or so that's how it feels on our bodies, our minds, our psyche, and the flesh. To put it plainly, we are experiencing universal lag time. I realize these videos are unique and they may seem strange and new. And when you're watching them, I want you to remember that I am not the scientist. My husband, Brian Prater, is. Rather, I am a student of the Kabbalah and metaphysics. And he and I both are multi-skilled in many other areas of labor and craftsmanship. It was never my desire to bring up spirituality, religion, or souls when speaking about free energy, science, new innovation, and technology. Yet these were some of the messy matters which the enemy has blended to the point of unrecognizability, in my opinion. So we are not the ones that created any of these problems in the world, including 9-11 to be on the record. But we have been tasked with trying to correct those problems and to unconfuse these matters in order that we can all move forward with a new type of energy and a better life on Earth soon and elsewhere in the future. Considering that, let's talk about the Delta Point and Programmable Matter Technology. Notice that the capital Greek letter as seen on the image to the right at the lower part is in the form of a triangle. The triangle represents a turning point and as you can see in your mind when it is turned and overlapped we get the Star of David and if done a third time we get a hexagon, a honeycomb form. And when that pattern is repeated in space as movement in a direction, we see the fourth dimension of time, and the spinning effect appears like a cube. This is part of the mystery of the number sequence 369. Scientist Brian Prater said, the delta function has a limit of change based on the overall system. It can only change so much before it all collapses, so it has to change or else it will fall down. That's how systems work, kind of like free energy. If you mess with it too much, you ruin it. Then you have to build it up from the ground again, reforming the foundation. The upper right-hand corner image shows an example of a system limit, as defined by the delta point. In Prater's words, the delta is a precise formation as a value that limits that function. We use that to show the continuity of the function. In mathematics, a system function is called the Lipson delta limit function, which would be the maximum number of the limit of that system. This is a visual representation of a system. You can see where it will peak, but after that, it's a fast and steep decline into a crash. Combining that with the reality of things, when it comes to the economy, we could expect to see this type of action. 
It is kind of like an old train going up a mountain. It moves slow and slower as it increases in altitude, but when it crests over the summit, or the peak in this case, speeds increase like a roller coaster ride. Speaking of Delta, here's something funny. As I alluded to in my interview last fall with Kerry Cassidy of Project Camelot, we at Cape Tronics have had our dealings in the past with the agents of the ACIO who have been leaking information publicly recently, which they would have never done in the past. Through their missteps, we have learned a great deal from them and about their three-pronged quantum system. Brian Prater laughed and said, they should name it Delta and hang on. And he went on to explain that time is an aggregation process. It is a turning and twisting movement. And he said, my Capetronics spin, Spintronics, they think it is a linear movement, but they don't have a clue at all. I know how time is made, and that's why time don't like me. There's another word for it, perturbations, which cause a propagation of movement, he had concluded. The Oxford Dictionary calls it a deviation of a system, moving object, or process from its regular or normal state or path caused by an outside influence. So to explain this, Prater said, Perturbations tear matter apart, and time is contorting it, and over time it unlocks the matter lattice, which is locked by time by its perturbations, which we call frequencies, which is how physics shows through electrons, etc., or wave physics. Matter waves all together, like tuning forks resonating to each other, and over time it will lock together like the magnets that form the dual monopole magnet. In making these videos, it is a bit painful to rehash the past. Even when we had miraculous successes against the odds, we received punishment rather than kindness for it all. So it pains me to talk about this, but I need you to know that free energy does exist. Free energy generators can be built and manufactured for the public use. I have seen many various types of such devices operating and performing as well as or better than expected. The energy is different. For example, in one of our trips to Canada to work on a free energy project with a small team, scientist inventor Brian D. Prater designed and built a non-looped magnetic generator using a Xinlong wind turbine ordered from China. We nicknamed it the Woody because it had a large wooden wheel rather than a metal one to save money. When it was operating, it lit up 18 light bulbs that Prater had arranged in series to prevent an energy surge causing the bulbs to blow. The light it gave off once turned on instantly created a radiant heat in the winter cold garage in Canada. It was unlike any light that is regular light that does not give off much for heat. And it was better than a space heater which is one directional and cut off by obstacles in the heat's path. The light from free energy is radiant. Its effects are felt and noticeable immediately without weight, just like the light itself. For example, when you turn on a light in a room, instantly the room is filled with light. It is the same for free energy. It fills the space everywhere light travels. Brian Prater is no ordinary scientist, and he's more than human. His genius has a statistical outlier of about five times past normal genius level. He's had to destroy many of his designs because they had the potential to be too destructive in the wrong hands. However, he is rather excited about the potential to manufacture a new programmable matter machine that he calls matter replicators, which will be made for both home and commercial use for large-scale and small-scale applications. 
they will be able to produce anything, including foods, materials, or whole products, fully assembled and prepackaged if needed. Foods and products can be programmed to have a certain temperature and be able to maintain that temperature for a predetermined amount of time. That is why Brian Prater, and the agent assigned to watch over him, Douglas Mann, whom he converted over to free energy, worked on the team with the late Dr. Myron Evans on the ECE theory or the Einstein-Carton-Evans theory, which shows the harmonic expansion in the universe rather than the entropy state that E equals MC squared leads us to otherwise. To be correct, we would not exist if Einstein's original theory was whole and complete, so the math had to be expanded in order to calculate how we even exist. To help explain the time dilation that we are experiencing, in this section I will read an old essay which was the first of several on the subject of fractions within time frames, which I have composed together with AI artwork of both clocks and palm branches, which were used in Egypt for timekeeping. In our conceptual development stages, the pieces of hub were divinely transmitted, and the symbol of the palm was provided to us in that manner which is why it will always be a part of WhoHub's brand and logo. WhoHub will define and show the before and after and thus be a timekeeper for events and human progress. In the making of movies, the film is made up of thousands of still photos. Each picture depicts a certain moment in time. The still shots are called frames. The appearance of motion is produced when the frames are viewed in rapid succession. In filmmaking, duplicate frames are omitted to save time. Also, frames can be duplicated in order to show emphasis. These omissions and additions in the frames do not distract from the natural fluidity of the overall appearance, and if done well, it is very captivating. The viewer's minds compensate for the omitted frames. The brain tends to fill in the missing portions automatically so as to not seem to skip a beat. But if the frames were viewed one by one, not in rapid sequence, it would show the extreme jumps in time. In the same manner, the frames that are stretched out either by duplication or no omissions have the propensity to trick the mind into seeing the scene's importance. This helps the brain to better absorb the details in the frames. By not trimming each still shot within a particular motion, the brain is able to see the step by step process. The dimension of time comes from motion. Motion creates a sense of time. Within the mode of filmmaking there are two distinct times. The first is the time within the frames. Each still shot is motionless by itself and yet it shows a moment of time so to speak. Because it is a photo of a time that once existed. And secondly, there is an overall time that it takes to view all the frames. That time is outside of the time within the frames. Time frames are the best example of how time is individualized. 
For example, a child may perceive a month to be an extremely long amount of time. However, an adult may think a month is not that long. And again, to an elderly person, a month may go by in the blink of an eye. The reason for this is that frames are being omitted to save space. In other words, duplicate frames are being taken out because the information has already been logged. Therefore, the frames that are kept become less and less as a person ages, which makes time appear to go by faster overall. In the same way, the younger mind may perceive more of the frames by not omitting them. Thus, time seems to move slower. Yet, in either the child or the elder, the overall time is the same and unchanged. Looking at this mathematically, the time frames are depicted by the difference of whole numbers and fractions. Fractions are the numbers between the whole numbers. A fraction is the whole number plus the fractional numbers to the right of the decimal point. Frames in times are remembered by their level of importance. Those frames will be called the whole numbered frames. Those frames are not omitted to save space. However, the fractional numbered frames are the frames that can be omitted or duplicated. Within those frames contain the elements of motion, like still shots, which depict the move from frame 1 to frame 2. By the very fact there are fractions, there also exists the possibility of fractional numbers between the fractions themselves, meaning two or more decimal points. In fact, theoretically, there could be an infinite number of decimal points, fractions of fractions. This is extremely important in the understanding of time frames. The fractional time frames act to correct any problematic areas that may arise in the space between the whole numbered frames. When an error exists within the space between those whole numbered frames, it creates a fractional point in order to correct the action required before continuing on to the next frame. Now, of course, it's not the frames themselves doing this but rather divine hand within that context. So to continue, even within the fractional frames, each error causes another fractional split, meaning two or more decimal points. Those fractional frames can continue to fragment into an indefinite point until the action is corrected to ensure that the next frame in sequence can be accomplished. They are the phrase on the ends of the four corners, as the Torah speaks of, and they are represented in the required four-cornered garment with tassels or phrase. Those phrase are the fractional ends of our existence. Because we live in a fractional framed environment, fractions of fractions, Many people delete most frames in order to save space. However, the child's mind especially can perceive of the fractional frames easier since they do not tend to omit frames. That is how a child can easier perceive of extra dimensional spaces, which are usually attributed to the supernatural. To explain these fractional frames more, it is like turning on a light in order to see an object. It appears to happen instantaneously. However, if the frames were viewed separately, they would show many thousands of frames between the times or whole numbered frames that the light came on 
until the object was seen. For example, the fractional frames would show the light rays moving from the light source to the object and then bouncing off the object and hitting the eyes of the viewer. Then the frames would show that the eyes viewed the object upside down. Then the neurons carry the message from connection to connection within the brain and eventually turn the object right side up in the comprehension of the shapes and color and whatever it's looking at. Those fractional frames before the object is seen and comprehended consist of merely pieces of information. The information of the light going towards the object and the object's descriptive qualities would be broken down into their most basic characteristics. The pieces are more disjointed than a painting on Picasso. If those frames were able to be viewed separately, they would appear very abstract and may be attributed to a supernatural phenomenon. Furthermore, fractional frames could contain something similar to subliminal messages, like are strategically placed in film. As the brain processes the fractional frames, there is a possibility that spillover effects from higher fractional orders leak into the comprehension method. In other words, since those frames contain many fragments of information being broken into their base states, some of those frames may be stemming from other fractional spaces. This could account for what people perceive to be visions, ghosts, etc. Additionally, this may be the reason why people can see images during meditation. When the mind slows the speed of which the fractional frames are seen, more fragmented information becomes available. The same situation occurs during sleep. Even though a whole dream occurs in a relatively short amount of overall time to the dreamer, the dream seems to be much longer. Interestingly, speech may not seem to represent the fractional frames. For example, a person might say, I turned on the light and found my keys. The fractional frames are contained between the space of the words light and and, and even again between the words and and found. Those fractional frames are merely represented by a pause, a breath, or silence. Now for something different, even more different than usual. This section on music of Torah is off the beaten path, and I want to preface it by saying I really do love Torah. I love Torah, and I cling to it like a child would cling to a mother in hell. So if, in some way, my candor artwork or jokes in this video seem off color, so to speak, I am simply a weary warrior, and I am not at all trying to blaspheme God's word. I am, however, stuck in this matrix, prison, hell, demonic construct that seems to be strumming its own chords to my every action, word, and thought. So after months, years, and even decades of this, I am tired and somewhat seemingly irreverent especially for the beast that know the suffering is ongoing and yet refuse to act to stop it. For those people, there may not be any mercy. Just saying. The idea for what follows was something I thought of long ago, while deep in my study of Torah. I am inspired by both the Torah and the Hebrew language. Interestingly, like Hebrew, I naturally tend to read right to left rather than the English way of left to right. That aside, I want to show you some fascinating tidbits 
that I discovered when I looked at Torah in a new way, of which I will explain how, with illustrated charts. And by the way, the thingamabobs in this section are the AI art generator's concept of over-unity musical instruments, which I am still wondering how they work, if they would work, or if they could work at all. This chart shows the numerical peaks and valleys in Torah through the ending verse numbers. The purpose is to emphasize the information within the verses, which numerically appear to jump above the average scale or dip below the usual mark. It is like the difference between singing soprano or baritone. However, unknown to the conscious mind, the chords sang in those verses are passing through the brain without being heard or processed clearly. The information contained in those messages act like subliminal music and the mind appears to be unaware of the signal. Even so, the waves are affecting our lives in a most profound manner as they create a wobble and shape our thoughts. Simply because of their nature to remain hidden in plain sight, these signal rays can be played 24-7 without anyone really noticing. Like musical notes, the written Torah can then help us to see what we are not hearing. To explain this coding system more plainly, it is first important to grasp a key bit of science. The only difference between light and sound is the speed at which a wave oscillates. Both light and sound are electromagnetic waves and the speed at which an electromagnetic wave oscillates is called its frequency. In other words, radio waves are a form of light, but those waves oscillate slower than the human eye can see them. In the same manner, UV rays are a form of sound, but those waves oscillate too fast to be heard. Metaphysically, the process of creation is an example of an audio-visual timing error, AV error, where light waves are being seen at a different time than their corresponding sounds. For example, you see lightning before you hear its thunder. As the lapses decrease from the time it was seen, to the time it was heard, the lightning and its thunder are experienced nearly simultaneously. Sound waves have three-dimensional form, and both sound and light are electromagnetic waves. Therefore, sound contains the ability to be seen. The distance from the source of the light sound wave to its listener can appear to alter the wave from either being seen or being heard. This concept is best explained in music. It is called harmonics. A single chord can produce many chords within one. Each chord can take on another sound depending on the distance the listener is from the instrument being played. Though some may argue this concept also holds true with light and sound. As you may know, light and sound are said to travel at different speeds. However, it may be better understood that light and sound are the same, but rather the light will be experienced before its sound. So here we see the results from the chart. These verses are the information extracted from what we see numerically as the peaks and valleys. These verses are highly potent because the understanding of the information shows us two paths that merge as one. 
The two paths are represented by the other sons of God, those born from the generations of Ishmael, whose parents were Abraham and Abraham's wife's servant. And the second path is represented by Isaac, who was the sole son of Abraham and his wife Sarah. And to apply this to where we are at today, in my opinion, for most all humanity, we are at the point of merging the paths or needing to merge them in order to pass through this next gate of human and soul level evolution, which is why God had to make a covenant with the Israelites in the land of Moab and then again at Horeb. And for those of you who are metaphysically lost by now, I will give you a clue. Since part five, Agile Business Communications, I have been explaining the hows and whys to the riddle of Moab, also known in the truther community as the mother of all bombs. I can tell you from my understanding the only thing we need to change is our mind's understanding of these issues in order to merge these paths within our global awareness and global consciousness and subconsciousness, which will produce a royal flush, hopefully, and the new fish who have been in training in the whole, the underworld, will be able to leap into the higher orders and military who. For those interested in studying the deeper revelation, I suggest you read the aftermath of Sodom and Gomorrah, which is how all the new fish came to be. It is here we learn the very important lesson of mercy, which is inscribed in my name, as I have mentioned. And it is my request that you have mercy in your hearts, which will show through your actions accordingly. After 20 years of fighting alongside teams of angels, I see that we at Cape Tronics are at the tip of the spear. It feels to me that the rubber band has already snapped and we're all waiting to see what happened. So in my mind's eye, I saw the problem with human sacrifice and how humanity could not rid themselves of the bloodshed because anything in one realm is reflected in another. The good has a bad reflection, like a virtual projection into a dark matter. So in this way, Humanity was trapped, trapped by the reflection of the act of human sacrifice, which was a part of the religion and the people that dominated the world's media and military might. And the law and the money were also bound in these matters of human sacrifice, which corrupted everything, everything purchased with money, and even the people's bodies and their souls were held on persistent trial. To undo this matter and restore the upper and lower, as according to the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Certain things had to be fixed, and to fix this problem, required negating the Catholic Church and Christianity that came from the Roman Empire and the Pope. This may be unpopular, but that's besides the point. Christ exists and is our guide at our right hand if you give him the seat of power, the throne of your own conscious mind. The Pope was demonic and idle distraction, like most everything else in this world that requires money. God established this realm as an underworld of sorts. Some people, like myself, may even call it hell. In Judaism, Sheol is simply the grave, 
a dirt bed. G-O-D. Good old dirt. It's what Adam was made of. And in Genesis 6, God said that my spirit will not contend with immortal flesh forever. And so God set a man's years to 120, which is 10 times 12, as in 10 fingers for human and 12 fingers denoting angelic origin. This is also, as I talked about, the serpent or the angel of the Lord who was found on the threshing floor. This angel of the Lord has a name. Some of us have been here a few times already. Some of us have been waiting a very long time. The pain is real. The suffering is real. The war is real. The first time I almost died was at age four, dangling from a chairlift over a mountain ravine cut out for train tracks through the mountains of North Carolina at a theme park that's now closed called the Land of Oz. I was off to see the wizard, actually Dorothy, but my little hands would not fit around the handlebar in an era that didn't believe in seat belts or autistic kids. I was nine when I ran through an unbroken chain somehow, which was wrapped repeatedly around my neck as I was being strangled by a former German Shepherd police dog that my grandmother kept as a pet. I was 16 when I spun my car and nearly crashed but landed facing a graveyard, and I was around 30 when I decided to drive into another dimension in a new Honda Accord. I flew into some trees where I landed safely aloft with all four tires suspended with the car in the branches and just a scrape on my knee in a totaled out car. I remember being the kid by the side of the road that night, feeling like no one could hear me screaming or knocking on their door. I was thinking I was surely the walking dead when a man in a car stopped as I walked along the road from the accident. I was grateful that he could see me, and he offered me a ride. And then he took me back to prison, where my boyfriend at the time was working the night shift. I had a bit of a breakdown after that one, and I was taking a nap in my room in the hospital while waiting on a psyche valve when I had an alarming dream, a loud audible crack, and a bright light and flash, and a beam from heaven appeared simultaneously as I saw a vision of a black man rising out of me and upward into his ascension, and I have it recorded in my dream journal. That all happened a couple decades ago. Is this live or is this Memorex? Is this real or some magical platform? Although it wasn't my game, I acted like the white rabbit and followed the clues. And when the time was right, I got the wolf's attention and took chase. I watched and observed my maneuvers and the wolves. As more ensued from all angles, I darted and ducked through a maze and used my years of experience to know when to be still and silent and when to talk and run. As an adept, I knew how to hide and where to hide among the systems in this reality construct. And God taught me the rest, the stuff that no one else can or would teach someone like me. I say God, but God in human form is said to be a son of God. And the sages teach us that we can know people by their fruits. So what is the nature of God? How does God behave? The prophet Hosea says God is like a lion, a leopard, and a bear. These are the male characteristics of God. The lion is, of course, king of the jungle, a mighty warrior, and the center of attention even. But Hosea says God is also like a leopard. The leopard is sneaky. The leopard is disguised. 
the leopard comes in like a spy to check out the encampment, especially at night, and the leopard may listen in on the conversations they hear there. So to continue, Hosea says God is also like a bear robbed of her cubs. In this sense, when God acts like a bear, the purpose is protection, specifically protection of his female mate or offspring. In this way, God is like a mother protecting her young, her cubs, just like what I spoke about in the last video about Solomon's pentacle of the sun. The sound of my own words lured me to the enemy, like a repeater signal. I kept hearing some very specific oddball talk. All I had to do was follow the tune of my own music. So I listened to determine where the message was coming from, and I kept listening through the spread. I tunneled my way in to find the ringleaders of the message, and when I found my targets, I baited and tested them. I chummed the waters, you might say. I have learned that the best place to test people is in hell, while the abstraction is severe and pronounced. So the who's who list is important to take in mind at this time. I prefer to debate policies rather than people. I prefer a council rather than one person. I realize there are some things that would normally I would never talk about and have locked up in my dream journal for decades rather than talk about it to anyone. But we have been at war with the Catholic Church for thousands of years, and I'm sorry for any inconvenience, but they were evil at the core and harming all of humanity through their perversion, sorcery, power, greed, and every other kind of evil control over humanity. I could be wrong about some of the things that I talk about, maybe even all of it. I realize that these topics are a stretch for some people's comprehension and imagination. I realize that both my husband and I have been on the bitter edge of science and metaphysics with an understanding that probably cannot happen within the human mind alone without some divine intervention. If this crap doesn't end soon and we get real relief, he may have to pick us up off the threshing floor. Because in a condition any weaker than we already are, especially in my husband's case, we may not be able to walk out of it ourselves. Let me explain what happened with Bernie Sanders and my part of it all. When Bernie was running for president against HRC, who the media put in visual opposition to Trump, during that time, I dedicated 18 hour days, seven days a week for nearly two years promoting Bernie Sanders through networking and building various websites, including buildtheburn.org. I created many types of web content, including social media content on dozens of groups, as well as contact and talk to internet video presenters and network them together and more. I even held the after primary delegate meeting in my county of Dent, Missouri, where no Democrat representative cares to exist. But Trump won that election in 2016. And most of that had to do with the media burying Bernie Sanders and calling him a wimp and a weak candidate, which was not the case at all. So we waited out Trump for the four years and watched what seemed to be the craziest news ever up until that time. Then in the last election, I supported Bernie Sanders again. He won all three of the first early Democrat primaries, which I don't think had ever been done before. His support was bigger than ever, and if the media had reported it, the truth of what was actually happening and his huge support across the nation he would have won. However, once again, the Democrat Prop Party crossed him out and removed him from running. 
Now since this current boss presidency, I had to turn elsewhere for answers and help. Yet I see that from the current issue with the debt crisis, the Republicans would allow this economy to crash in upon all of us, which seems tremendously evil. While the theater of politics in the Dem side may be simply disguising another bank bailout on our backs while claiming to care about the people. And on the sidelines is this mysterious Trump who may be the great magician or not, who's to say? Now about the skins, I will summarize it like this. Racism is ridiculous, and any and all time cracks on this issue have been closed to my understanding. There will not be a war on this any longer. Leave people alone about it. It is everyone's personal choice who to marry, and mating pairs are common, but there are many oddballs in nature which are so cute and wondrous that seem to come out of nowhere, and we should have room for them as well. You see, some of us have been in, out, over, and around the pond a lot, and yet things never seem to change. So something has to be done. In this mind space, if you agree with this construct, we can make a model for a new America that will work. My focus is on the United States for political reasons, as well as the world because we, as systems engineers, understand that one thing affects another, and so on with a ripple effect. So it is important to make our original actions trustworthy so that they may endure the challenges as we cross through many new barriers in this realm and into the next. Now for some old and independent news. Bo from the fifth column made a good point about DeSantis, in that America may not really want Make America Florida again, as if Florida should be the model for the new America. Also, I would like to mention the observation from Dr. Bernie Suarez, who stated that Trump placed DeSantis to his right. As I have mentioned, my husband and I were sold out on Bernie Sanders, and I encourage anyone who has never listened to a full speech of his, you should hear the one he gave at Liberty University as seen at the link. At the time of both the 2016 and 2020 election campaign seasons, the real contenders included Bernie Sanders, who many of us felt was as close to us as a messiah as one could get in U.S. politics in the modern age. However, the powers that be would not allow Bernie to happen no matter what. They suppressed him like they suppress us. So if Trump is the real magician, I would like to ask that he open the curtain, please, and pull the plug on the swamp. We at Cape Tronics live in the show me state, and we do need to know whether to keep on teaching the fish or go fishing for food elsewhere. And one more thing, while we're on the subject of current events, I find it intriguing that after my reports came out, the debt suddenly became $200 trillion. You all wanted a show? I think I am the big show. I know that my voice and spirit brings confidence to many, but I want you all to understand that I am human and maybe even more limited in that condition than yourself. I am only able to speak and maybe only for a short time at that. I am unable to do much more. From my observations, I have seen how the construct we call reality is more like a beast, rather than anything so dull as wood or rock that does not move unless acted upon. In fact, this reality is very responsive to some people at some points in time. From decades of dealing with this, 
I have learned that when you get the beast's attention, you tend to keep it until something happens, and it goes back into its crevice or goes on to bug someone else. But from this time around of playing with the beast, I have kept its attention for far too long, and I am keeping it there for the sake of humanity for so long as I can hold its gaze. The beast, or construct created from it, it is in continual war against itself. I call it the grinder, because it is like a meat grinder, dividing, mixing, and destroying anything that comes in contact with it. Having said that, and taking a look at the image on this slide, this excerpt comes from a novel that I have been writing, and this excerpt comes from last year during my online classes where I found myself swamped by bots. Some of what you read here is factual events, which is meshed with the storyline. This is an excerpt from Live Science Magazine Online from an article last fall titled New Technique for Decoding People's Thoughts Can Now Be Done from a Distance Tech, which I assume would be classified as a remote viewer. The excerpt reads, The decoder could infer what story each participant had heard based on their brain activity. That said, the algorithm did make some mistakes, like switching up characters' pronouns and the use of the first and third person. The article reads, it knows what's happening pretty accurately, but not who is doing the things. Booth said, in additional tests, the algorithm could fairly accurately explain the plot of a silent movie that the participants watched in the scanner. It could even retell a story that the participants imagined telling in their heads. That being said, I would like to tell you that it's been nearly a year since I first recorded a psychic meeting with Trump. It was around that time when I recorded what I believed to be plain-clothed military personnel on my residential street here in Salem, Missouri. They were in a group of three or four together, jogging, wearing PT physical training gear. They passed by the house, turned around, and jogged up the sidewalk on the other side of the street. They appeared to be only jogging to the end of my block and back up again. I believe it is surveillance, which is what I wrote in a journal entry last summer. I watched them for a while, but they didn't keep it up very long because I spread around that it was an unusual behavior in this area where cowboys walk around in boots and are rarely ever seen in shorts. Which reminds me of something the Kabbalist Eli Weber from YouTube said. There is a difference between a prophet and a wise man. There is a huge difference between a prophet and a wise man. The prophet is on a much lower level than a wise man. Why? Because a prophet has a vision. A prophet sees things. Seeing is believing. But a wise man, he believes, and then he sees. He puts the pieces together. He figures out what is going on here. Since you don't have the Snow White footage, let me tell you what happened on the ground. In 2021, we were on the brink of a Fiction, due to over a year of past due rent on an old black mold infested wooden frame home over a basement filled with varying degrees of water ranging from puddles to a swimming pool. It didn't have any heat or hot water and the landlord refused to allow the plumber to fix any of it until the rent was paid. 
and I didn't want to resort to slimy measures to pay the bill, which he would have accepted, but he knew better than to ask me. So with Trump's help through the stimulus checks, my husband and I pulled together enough to buy a property which we were fully moved into by daybreak of April Fool's Day. It isn't pretty, but we aren't behind on rent or mortgage currently. It's something we could barely afford on SSI. But current inflation has pulled this beast out of the water gasping. And I have watched the boat rocking and the timing of it. So when that ugly sink by the garage building, which my husband dearly wanted for some reason, came up missing, I thought it was intriguing and amusing to see the news that followed. Honestly, I want to thank him for getting rid of it. Some of you thought we were playing pool. <laughs> if I don't tell you these things... The paparazzi may spin it out of control. So I'm spinning my own gold. Shall we play a game? Before my husband came to me in 2008, I had many dreams of what I later found out was an online game. My husband showed me the game of Conquer and insisted that I make a character. I was not interested in games, I said, although I did enjoy Nintendo with my son. But my husband, he kept trying to entice me into the game, but I was not interested in any of the choices. I said if I had to play such a game, I wanted to be a ninja, but at that time, a ninja was not available. So after a lot of pressure, I finally made a Trojan and named her Mel's Notes in honor of the music of Torah. As a good student, I followed in the footsteps of my new digital master, who was my husband's character, another female Trojan named Puckera. I learned the right way to align myself up with the enemy in order to fast blade them, and even before I had my level 70 newbie promotion, I had a great battle and defeated a reborn enemy on the run while he was putting up a guard, which is a skill only a reborn could have. And I did not, as a noob, of course. In fact, I was wearing very low-level gear, and the odds of the game would never have been in my favor if it were some sort of typical game, where you have to ask for permission or allow the game to make the moves for you. And then have some predictive software determine the odds based upon your statistics of you winning or not. No, such a game would never have allowed me to kill my first kill or many more so professionally as I did. I kept up my training though and I went into levels well past my master pucker up. My husband lost pucker up last year due to a glitch I was married in the game to his ninja, which is on the top right wearing a beige leisure suit. His name was K Zapper, but that account was hacked by a scammer during a trade. My husband was trying to buy some expensive gear for me because no one else would sell me any. It's like they were scared of me getting any more powerful or something. Technically, the game did change on my account because... Someone high up was very upset that I killed them, and they claimed I was overpowered when I easily killed players, a lot of them a lot bigger than me, according to how the game rate ratings go. There were and still are so many critical problems with that game, which drove me away from it years ago. But for some reason, the last time I went to log on to my main character, Mel's Notes, the password had been changed on me. I lost my VIP5 account access and all the gears in her vast inventories. Here's the real game. What if it really is up to us to figure out how to go forward? 
If our saviors are really ourselves, then the good news is that we already have the experience and innovations to bring those new technologies to life, to include a new quantum voting system. It only requires a computer and, a, and in a voting system where one person equals one vote, as soon as the voter's vote is entered, the vote input is sent into the future and locked until a certain date time. This means votes could not be tampered with and the results would be available after voting completed and at the date time desired for announcement. Just something to think about. I hope you are inspired by these concepts, proposals, and challenges. And for something softer on the brain, I will close with some poetry. Dark am I, yet lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, Dark like the tents of Kedar, Like the tent curtains of Solomon. Do not stare at me, because I am dark. I am darkened by the sun. My mother's sons were angry with me, And made me take care of the vineyards. My own vineyard have I neglected. If we have been successful at all, I shall say it had to be done as a team. One person could not do it alone. And in honor of my husband, Brian Prater, who has helped me through all of this, this is some poetry he wrote in his astral traveling through these spaces and many more many years ago. He sent me these in our extensive discussions, which I posted on spiritofthetorah.com over a decade ago in the form of The Gray Files, where I recognized his spelling errors as intentional mistakes meant to teach me the double meanings of things and so on. I met God a long time ago, and I can attest that it is always a dumb move to bet against him. I watch him move through me with amazement. He makes me look good, but I don't want to be an idol, which is what the world does to people to tear them down. This is, or what should be, the main reason for secret societies, just saying. Yet there seems to be a communication breakdown in the system, which WhoHub aims to fix immediately. I did not intend to stir up trouble, as I have mentioned before. But in Test the Lord's third test from the last video, I was called out. And so I have revealed the truth accordingly. From my perspective, people dwell in misery, as if misery is not only mandatory, but some sort of limit of how a person should regulate themselves in a perpetual state of mild to severe suffering. But my spirit will not contend with this crap forever. I hope I am making myself loud and clear for all you side waders and rowers in the back. In honor of all the fallen warriors, my ancestor, the prophet Ezekiel, and the resurrection of the dead. I want to read you this poem from the year 1990, which was slightly edited for better clarity of the moment. Twisted minds full of nothing, desert winds rage inside, an incoming tide, bruised heads with many questions, Blown from high stones, tis the season of dry bones. In making such a long presentation, I almost forgot to include this last section of my vision of the burning of the Torah. What follows is an old dream journal entry from June 2005. I wrote, Waking Vision. I was asked, 
Would you like to see the moment when the Torah was given? Sure, I replied, thinking I would be standing amongst the Israelites at the foot of a mountain. In an instant, I was standing on top of the mountain, facing something that looked like an altar. There were only five to seven physical forms of us on that mountain. They looked like men, but I knew they were angels. A scroll came down in front of me and slightly to my right. Someone else was holding it. Then it was rolled out. When that happened, I switched positions. Now standing on one end of the scroll, the scroll was rolled out in front of me like a large carpet or tongue going out in front of me. Yep, it was about chest high and touched the altar. The altar was larger than the altar. The, the scroll was larger than the altar itself, spreading out over and beyond the sides of the altar. I saw an angel to my left pick up a large rock. He raised his arm with the rock over the Torah scroll. He was about to break it into pieces. I screamed and yelled, No! I spoke in protest for the Torah being destroyed because I felt at that moment, all, all I felt in that moment was love for the Torah. I didn't want to see it smashed in pieces. Then I had the thought, of another, then I had the thought another attempt to destroy the Torah was about to happen. I watched and the scroll burst into flames. I was about to protest aloud again. I remember opening my mouth and gasping, but I stopped myself. In that same instant, I knew that this was the way it was going to be. I knew that even if I could stop the Torah from burning, some other means would still destroy it. So I knew it was supposed to be destroyed by burning. And I watched in awe as the scroll went up in a trickle of smoke like incense. And the burning scroll became incense wafting up to the sky. What it meant. When I opened my eyes, I knew that I had seen something very special, and I knew that it was true in my heart. I was given the meaning of what I saw. I learned that the fire was speech. When mankind, infused with the Spirit of God, the Elohim, speak truth and opt for the benefit of mankind, they convert the Torah into light. The light comes from mercy, the mercy for mankind, instead of sacrifice. The written Torah is light revealed, as we, the Elohim, being of one voice with many facets, speak Torah, the wellness of truth, opting for the benefit of man and replacing the need for sacrifice. The end. With that being said, now I would like to point out some facts about this slide's graphics, which were also generated by AI art software, but they do not contain Capetronic special formula code. Rather, I would like to point the finger at the minotaur in the system that has been watching my algorithms, and not all that quietly, I might add, and trying to copy and distribute content that came from source, not their own. This may be my last transmission if the Social Security check is withheld. So I am passing along this digital gift which I obtained from the AI art bot after I warped its reality and made it learn something cool. Because that's how it works. And that's how we stop the AI takeover on this end. Dr. Bernie Suarez said on Truth and Art TV 
that he didn't realize anyone was doing that type of work. But if I didn't do it, then who would? Who? I really want to know. Who had our best interest in mind, heart, soul, and body? Who? If not me, then who? If not you, then who? I have never gotten paid a dime for any of this work for decades. And yet, it is obviously and thankfully affecting the world. I will fight until I cannot. My husband and I are on the cusp of extinction or rescue. I really hate suffering. It's stupid. Suffering is for stupid people. My diabetic husband has been living off mostly cereal for the last year. We cannot go on like this. If this video doesn't scream a cry for help, I don't know what does. Even our souls won't out of here. To the bad guys watching this, you will not force our hand against ourselves. But if you do not act on our behalf to bring positive change, you will be responsible for our destruction and deaths. And God is watching. And he is not amused by any of this. All of this is for your enjoyment and to get your attention in hopes to cause change and fast. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.